How you doing, friends, brothers, patriots? Um, I just want to say this. <clears throat> I'm just going to kind of ramble for a minute, I guess. Um, first of all, um, I'd like to thank anybody that subscribed recently. Um, all you guys. Um, Brad, I've seen a video. Um, where you trying to control your tongue? Um, brother... I do that a lot myself. I, I have to really control myself. And, you know, I've, I've always said to people, you know, when they when they, when they they curse a lot or anything like that, you know, that um, if you really think about it, people that use a lot of curse words, because I was in the Navy. I mean, you know, and you know the old saying, because like a sailor, you know. Um, and I did a few little things here, but, you know, it doesn't matter. But, um. What does matter is, um, I do want to say that when when you use foul language in any way, um, first and foremost, if you're trying to live right for God, it, it, it hurts your testimony. I mean, you can tell people about God, or you can tell people how much you love the Lord, this and that, but if you're telling nasty jokes, and he's talking dirty to us, and you got a foul mouth and stuff like that, it, you know, um... It it causes your testimony. It causes what you say that is good to 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 be null and void in people's minds and in their eyes and how they view you. Um, so how we carry ourselves and, and and what we say and how we treat others and how we talk to others and stuff like that is so important. And you know, um, God's word says, you know, a kind word turneth away wrath, you know, and stuff like that. And we should all try to speak kindly to one another the best we can. Now, there's some people you just can't get through to, you know, and, and and I understand this. I understand all this rage right now that's going on. Um, I get it. I understand. I myself have been in the past a an extremely violent individual. And um, I've had to pray about that all my life um and i think the fact that i have had to pray about that all my life is the only thing that's kept me out of prison um i believe god saw that i was making an attempt to try to control the rage and the anger to to you know when because when I, i'll be honest with you when i see something bad happening to innocent people when i see people getting attacked you know, that, that are weaker vessels or that are humble and or meek or elderly or kids. When I see that, I mean, I sit there and I'm, I'm just like, my Lord, why couldn't I have been there? Because I knew I could have made a difference. I knew I could have changed something. You know, I knew I could have made a difference in that situation and or the outcome of that situation because... I, I know me, I know my abilities, and, and that's not to brag. That's not to brag at all because nobody wins in a fight. Nobody wins. Nobody wins in a fight. Now, there is times when you, there is a time to fight. There's a time to love. There's a time to hate. There's a time to, you know, have peace. There's a time to war. You know, you you come to my castle. Um, you try to hurt those I love. And 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 you're and you're coming for war. You you try to come into my home, my castle, and harm my loved ones. Then you have just started a war. And where I try to, I try my best. And and it's it's a walk daily. I'm I'm nothing above any of you all. I am nothing to be lucked up to. I'm nothing to be, you know, if there is, and I've said this often to people, if there is any good in me. It, you know, whether I've helped people, whether I try to do something for somebody, whether I, whether it's me stopping to change a tire for some elderly person, no matter what it is, if there is any good in me, if I help you, if I lift you up and this and that, you know, I, you know, I like to think of myself as a, as a pretty good man, but the Bible says none is good. You know, even when they approached Jesus and, you know, and said, good master, you know, why he said, why callest thou me good? And he was perfect. Well, I'm not even on the same um, star 
you know, as, as Jesus Christ, as far as on the, the scale of things, I'm like billions of billions of light years away from, from his intellect, his mindset, his meekness, his love, his care, his long suffering, his kindness, um, his love for his fellow man, his love for his enemies. I am a lot years away from what Jesus was able to do. I'm a lot years away from what the, a lot of the apostles was was able to do. You know, I guess if I'm if I'm if I'm really honest, which I am, I'm brutally honest. You know that that's one thing I am. I would have to say I I have often prayed to to run through a troop. You know. Um, to leap over a wall, to to be like one of David's men, and 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 slay a thousand, and and if you read in the Old Testament, some of his some of his best men, he had about thirty of them, or so. Um, there were some slain beasts, like with lions' heads and and men's bodies and stuff. I mean, they were they were slaying giants in the, in those days and stuff like that. Um, uh, David him David himself took out. You know, a Neph one of the Nephilim or the one of the giants or the whatever you want to call them, but I mean, you know, I rage, I get angry. I mean, I I literally feel like my head will explode sometimes when I'm watching what's going on. There is a strong delusion on this nation. There's a strong delusion on that whole leftist elite. Side, there is a strong delusion over their eyes. There's a veil they cannot see. And the Bible says, you know, to you know, him, to him to have uh, eyes to see and ears to hear, they cannot see. They're blinded by rage, they are blinded by hatred, and they cannot hear, they cannot reason. You cannot reason with an idiot. You cannot reason with with someone who is raging. You cannot reason with that person. And you know, I see what's unfolding here in front of me in this in this world, in this nation. And I can tell you this: Russia, Iran, uh, you you know you you all do know that Russia and China just went rogue as far as they are now having their own internet, both of them separate from the United States. Now, why would you do that, Gerald? Well, I, when I was in the military, that to me, that would have been a strategic move if I wanted to strike a nation like the United States. So while we're down here in Virginia, all, all cowboyed up, put, putting on our boots and strapping on our, our belts with our big guns hanging off of them or whatever. While they're going down there to do that, where this country is in such a division, such a divide, I can tell you this, without, without a doubt, Russia, Iran, China, and all Syria, all these other Turkey, all these other nations are smiling because you know what? Even though they know nothing, probably, of this right here, the most important thing you ever pick up or hold in your hands in your life, even though they don't know anything about this, they know the art of war. And they know this. They know, even they know, a house divided cannot stand. And while we're in disarray and this whole nation is coming apart and raging against one another, and if it kicks off in Virginia, if it kicks off in Kentucky, or it kicks off somewhere else, it doesn't matter. They're all sitting back and smiling, and they're smiling because they know that this nation will be at its weakest point once a civil unrest begins. They know this. And they are smiling. And you know what? They no longer need us. Because our big tech has sold us out. They no longer need us. We are no longer needed. We have put tariffs on China so bad that it's almost going to bankrupt them. What do they have left? But war. We have put tariffs on Russia so strong that it's weakened their economy. 
what we have left as Russians to war. These elites, they have said so many times they want a population in the entire world. And make no mistake about it, they're all Satanists. They're all probably drinking babies' blood and eating body parts from little infants that are have been, you know, killed in, you know, in the mother's womb or in one of these Planned Parenthoods. God help this nation. God help this nation, Lord, in Jesus' name. You know, and, you know, these, they are, they're demonizing, Lord, in Jesus' name, help me. They are demonizing Christians. They're demonizing Christians. So, and I, I, you know, I've always said this quote, you know, and give, give this some consideration. What it is, is they have come up with inventions, ways to infiltrate the churches, ways to infiltrate our military, ways to infiltrate our United States uh, politically, ways to infiltrate everything. They they have spies that know where every one of our nuclear sites are. Make no mistake about it, they will attack all that. A nation divided cannot stand. My God in heaven, help us in Jesus' name. We need to pray for this nation. You know what? Yes, I can fight a little, I guess. You know, I've been an MMA instructor for over 20 years. Yeah, yeah, maybe I can throw some fisticuffs. But you know what? Who cares about that? When this nation is in embers and in ashes and there's no one left. And when this nation is on fire because once we are divided, we are at our weakest. When the grid goes down, when we're sent back to the 1800s, whether it be from an EMP or whether it be somebody setting off one of our nuclear sites or whether it even be Yellowstone erupting. God has his hand on this. God has had this, his hand on this nation. But we have been making a mockery of God and literally shaking our fist at the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and saying, I am my own God. Do you remember Anton LaVey? Do you remember his, his leader? Do you remember him? Lord Jesus, name help me. Help me, Father. <sighs> Crowley. The name, the name, the name just eluded me for a moment. But Mr. Crowley, remember that? My battery's about to go dead. Crowley. Alistair Crowley. Do what thou wilt is the whole of the law. That's what he said. And that's exactly what this nation is doing. They're trying to be their own gods. They're saying, God, we don't need you. This nation has never needed God more. Selah, think about this. And God bless you in Jesus' name. Pray for me. Pray that I be set ablaze for the kingdom of God and for Christ. And that God's hand rest upon me and my family. And I pray that God's hand rest upon all of you all. And if you don't know Jesus Christ... You got to learn to get a personal relationship, and the only way you can do that, it's not by just re a repeat after me. Uh, God forgive me from my sin. No, it is it is a lifelong journey, and you got to soak and drench yourself into this word if you really want to know God. You got to get in this word, and you got to soak yourself in it. You got to soak yourself in this word. You got to learn the word. The Bible says, "Hide the word within your heart." You know, and it, the word should be carved into the flesh, not just on paper. It, it, and I don't mean to go out and be cutting yourself. You know, that's a metaphor. I'm just saying, you get, you, the more you know of the word, the more you'll see clearly of what's really going on in this nation and in this world and in the kingdom of God before, because we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against powers and principalities and this whole darkness we, we 
my God in heaven. Here's the last thing I'll say as far as inventions goes. If necessity is the mother of invention, then God is the father of necessity. Selah and consider and think. Selah is Hebrew for think on this or give this some extra special thought. Think about what I just said. In Jesus' name, I pray for all of y'all. In Jesus' name, to have peace, love, and harmony. And for the Holy Spirit to come upon you and to reveal himself and to reveal Jesus Christ to you if you don't know the Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Take care, brothers. God bless you. Pray, pray hard. Pray, get alone somewhere in a closet and pray.